rights. I have a photograph or a scan of a hand-drawn plant that has a scale on it. It doesn't have to be beautiful or pretty. It just has to be legible and has to have a noticeable scale on it. I will open up SketchUp, start a new file. Selecting the architectural template. I'll remove the scale figure. Take a look at the axes here and then I will begin to import that image. I'll go to File, Import. Bring in that image. And I lock it to the origin point. Drag it up just a little bit, not too far, just a little bit. Then zoom extents. Take a look at the image. And it's not facing north. SketchUp's default orientation to north is actually up this way. The image is facing north this way, so I will immediately rotate the entire image. I'll grab the rotate tool, grab a corner, drag out a reference line, and then turn the entire image 90 degrees so that, uh, so that the image is facing north in this general direction. That'll help me uh, with a couple of things later on. You can also grab the move tool, grab the origin of the image, and just snap it to the origin here. Zoom extents and zoom out a little bit. Now I've got my image lined up with the origin point so that the image is facing the general direction of north. You can see the red axis is going to the right, the, the green axis is going to the top, and the z axis is going you know, from the z axis to the top. Okay, that gets me set up in terms of well, just the, the reference image facing in the right direction. Now I'm going to scale the image. So I grab my magnifying glass, zoom in really tight to the scale bar that we have on the drawing. And then grab the measuring tool, the tape measure. I float the cursor on the face of the image, close to that little corner as I can, click and then drag a red line to something very close to the other side of the scale bar, let it float there. I click and then I type 100, 100, single quote, single quote for feet. You can see it there in the image, single quote for feet, and then press enter. Do you want to resize the model? Yes. And then I zoom extents. And now um, the model is scaled to this image. Next thing I'll do, I'll open up tags. Tags are used to be known as layers. I will make a series of new layers. So I'll start one of the drawing. And then I will make this background image if I right mouse click Entity Info, I can push it from the untag layer to the drawing layer. And now that image is on its own layer. Very important that it's on its own layer. Then I will start another tag called Buildings. And then another tag called Ground Plane or Ground Stuff. That would include, that will include all of our, our landscape and, uh, and curb and streets and the like. Very important that we keep these tags separate. Uh, we want the, the, the buildings to be able to be turned on and then turned off. I'm going to make another tag called existing buildings because we will, I'll show you how to import those shortly. So existing buildings. And these are under tags. They used to be called layers uh, in the, the building information management or BIM world of construction management and architecture. They are now called tags. Um, uh, layers is, is more appropriate, perhaps endemic to our landscape architecture and urban planning professions because it relates to GIS. Tags relate to uh, building components in BIM. 
uh, but just know that tags and layers are essentially the same thing in this current version of SketchUp Pro 2021. I'll go ahead and save the model. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to start saving the model to my desktop. I always tend to use the date. And SketchUp will be saving its saving it to the desktop currently. All right, so I will make buildings the active tag, active layer, and I'll zoom in to my first building, proposed building. I've got some apartments proposed here on the north side and some townhomes here on the south side. So I'll just orbit and get in, that into a position. And uh, for this, I will, I, I, we can use the pencil tool, but I also like to use the rectangle tool. Just lay a rectangle here. And you'll notice that it'll, it'll float on face on image. Float another rectangle here. Carry that over. Take the pencil tool and I'll, I'll just uh, notch out from midpoint to midpoint. corner piece and then with the eraser tool I can remove those portions like so move over to my next portion zoom in a little bit these are three buildings they're very similar but uh, they are they are slightly different sizes Take my rectangle, float it on the face of the image, and then SketchUp will notice when something is aligned. See how it lines up with the other existing entities. Float that rectangle right about there. Float this rectangle right about here. Take the eraser and erase that and then notch off this corner piece here, escape. I always use the escape key to stop an operation in SketchUp and then go on to another operation. Third one, I'll take this rectangle again, layer it like so, grab that endpoint, layer it like that, Hit the escape tool and I'll erase that line and then grab the pencil and just notch off this edge. Like so escape. Escape the escape key is a very important key in all of the SketchUp operations because it'll stop whatever operation that it is you're doing. Okay, so those are three building footprints. Next, I will grab the push-pull tool, and I will pull these building footprints up to their desired height. Now, the first floor will be in the realm of, of 16 to 18 feet. Subsequent floors would be in the realm of 12 feet, so I need to determine um, how many floors I want this to be. So for that operation, we can pull up a calculator and just say for the first floor, which is a commercial retail floor, I, I want uh, a fairly tall floor in the realm of 16 to 17 feet. And then a residential floor of about 12 feet, and then another residential floor of about 12 feet. So this would make a three-story building with one uh, floor of retail and two stories of apartments. And that gives me a 40-foot tall volume, plus uh, one or two extra uh, feet for uh, roof roofing or parapet or extensions or things like that. So uh, so let's consider a push pull of about 42 feet. 
uh, I, I grab the push-pull tool, I float over the entity, and it, the entity will highlight. I click, and then I pull it up, or push this, the mouse up or the trackpad up in the Z direction. It's pulling up in the Z direction. And then I let go of the mouse and, then and type in the distance I want that to pull. 4-2, single quote, and that, will, that is now a 42-foot tall volume. Same for this. I'll pull this up 42 feet. So again, I just float over the entity. I click with the push-pull tool, and then I push it in the Z direction and pull it up, let go of the mouse, and then type 4-2, single quote in that. Now, those all three of those volumes are now at 42 feet. This is, this is on the buildings layer, with, with buildings being the active layer. If I then come over to my next block. Here I've got a different situation where I have some, some townhomes or row homes, uh, but I, I can take on some of the similar directions and operations. I've got a little bit of, of stuff going on here. There's a uh, sky bridge going to the existing Ivy Tech building. Uh, there's, I imagine, perhaps the admissions office or something like that being, being there. So I'll just continue with the same thinking, pulling a rectangle here and another rectangle here. Hit the escape tool, grab the eraser, and, and trim that off. Take the pencil tool, lay it 45 degrees, hit the escape key, go back to the eraser, and trim that off. These aren't as tall, so uh, they, the, they perhaps are only two or three story townhomes, so they aren't as tall. So perhaps I can pull this up in the realm or direction of 24 feet. Because these are townhomes and they are not as tall as the apartments. Continue laying these rectangles down. The escape tool, the escape key. Chamfer this off. Escape. The escape key is in the upper left hand corner of your keyboard. ESC, that is the escape key. It's whenever you are finished with an operation or you want an operation in SketchUp to stop, you click, click, escape, erase, escape, pencil, that over to the edge. SketchUp will snap to the cardinal directions of 90 degrees, but also it'll snap to 45 degrees. Escape, pencil, and then eraser. Push-pull tool, I'll pull these up 24 feet. to my last block here. Escape, erase, escape, pencil, corner, escape. Tool up 24 feet to four single quote, and that prepares 
massing for a plan view or a very simple block massing view. For more advanced thinking or more advanced detail, we have um, a series of, of, of SketchUp components and buildings uh, uploaded to a folder. And I'll show you how to access that folder and bring in those components and lay them on top of these masses uh, in our next set of operations. We are in OneDrive, and for the course that we're uh, you're enrolled in might be Plan 605 or it could be Plan 261, uh, whatever course that I'm teaching you at this time, uh, I've I prepared a resources folder for you. Uh, in it, you'll, you'll notice uh, backgrounds and foregrounds for Photoshop cutouts. For Photoshop, this includes cars and people and trees. Icons for Adobe Illustrator, that's for building logos and icons. SketchUp models and components, that's for this operation here. Templates and fonts for InDesign. Uh, portfolio and presentation uh, posters and textures um, uh, also for, for Photoshop. So I'm going to go to SketchUp Models and Components and I have these things separated by, by uses. We have cars, commercial and retail buildings, industrial buildings, mixed-use buildings, parklets, residential buildings, special-use buildings, which are institutional buildings, streets and parking, trees, and urban ag. So if we just go under residential uh, I'm interested in perhaps a town home or a townhouse. And so we have a few um, uploaded here. So here's a here's a townhouse. Here's an urban row house. So if I download that urban row house to the downloads folder, I can open that up separately in SketchUp. This is an urban row house that I developed for a project a few years ago. It's got a few features on it. It's got a, uh, a roof terrace or a roof garden, uh, or an, actually an, an opportunity to put a greenhouse on top or, or, or some sort of roof terrace. It is double-sided, so it's got a few, few features uh, built into it. What I'll do here, this is, um, this is all one group or one, one, or one component. Uh, so, so if I open it up on its in its own realm, I can copy it to the pasteboard. The pasteboard is a, a mythical, uh, ethereal thing that that exists on your computer. It's 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 when you uh, copy something from anything in Word or Photoshop or uh, or PowerPoint, it's copied to the pasteboard or to what what Windows users often call a clipboard. And then we can paste it into uh, this model here. So if I go ahead and paste it into the model, you'll see it floating there. And what I can do is lay it directly uh, adjacent to or over my massing there. And then we can zoom in and take a look at it and, and do some more uh, specific op uh, uh, movement or copying or operations to it. So I had envisioned all of these to be row, row houses. I will grab them with the move tool. I'll grab one corner, move it kind of up like this. And so you can see how the stoop of the row house is lined up directly with the street. Might move it back just a little bit. And I might push this back a little bit as well and then just move this row house in place of, begin to replace it here, in place in, to replace the massing that I blocked out. We have a couple of townhomes or row houses that you can choose from, and, uh, and there are more on the 3D warehouse. So this now row house is starting to replace this this uh, smaller mass which he, we had forecasted for this area. I'll duplicate that several times. I had forecasted I think three row houses on this particular portion of the block. So I'll just click it again, copy it, and then I will use paste in place. It will put a copy of that row house 
directly on top of the other one, then I can grab the Move tool and grab a corner, and then copy the second row house to the opposite corner. So, do that again, and I can, I can move it a very specific dimension as well. So for instance, if I grab this corner and I move it on the z-axis, you can see the distance in the lower right-hand corner. It's keeping track of that. If, if it's a 20-foot wide unit, and I type 20, two, zero, single quote, it'll put a copy of the row house exactly at 20 feet. So if you know the width or dimension of something, it's, it makes it fairly easy. Copy, paste in place. It puts another copy right on top of it. Grab the Move tool, move the second, the third row house over, and SketchUp will snap it. Will now remember that you you cared about 20 feet as a dimension, and so uh, it it'll it'll snap to that that 20 foot dimension. Copy, paste in place, and then it looks like we've got four row houses in this portion of the block. What this does is it takes you from simple uh, massing to some more detailed massing. This row house, this particular urban row house, is about 35 feet tall, so it has some pretty high, high ceilings, uh, opportunities for, for, for maybe some lofting or, um, or some things on the roof deck itself. That's from ground to parapet. So there's some opportunities for an active basement, some windows into a basement, a full first floor and a full second floor, as well as a roof deck makes it a little bit taller than 24 feet uh, originally. So you can see, see some historic row homes have similar dimensions in that they are lifted up from the ground to allow some light into the basement and to make perhaps the basement a functional unit or rentable unit. I will continue that same thinking now. Uh, I can grab now using the shift key. I can, I can click on one of these components Using the shift key, I can click multiples of them, copy, paste in place, and then grab the move tool and move an entire group of these into place and snap them to a specific portion of the model. And then what I might do with my uh, original massing block here, I might start to push the, those things back or eliminate them altogether. As I think the original massing I have placed here is, is probably unnecessary, so I will just get rid of it. And just continue to use the row houses. I think one more should do. snap to 20 feet. Let's go to a different row house model. So we'll go back to a different row house. There's some nice ones under mixed use as well. So if I go to mixed use, there's a small mixed use loft. It's a fairly nondescript building. So 
select all of that and paint it white. Before I move into the other portions of SketchUp, you can modify it. Paint it specific materials before we bring it in. There's glass and mirrors. Good. Good. Copy. Copy this over. Let's go to a different portion of the model. Maybe up towards here. And we'll start to place those in place. So, use the rotate tool. So, the rotate tool, you see a protractor similar to what you had in your school supplies. That protractor needs to lay on the image as I float around one particular corner. I click, drag a reference line out, click again, and then begin the rotation 90 degrees. Click again. And then I can move this component into place and then just slide it right over there. What that will do, it gives me the opportunity to think about these elbow buildings as more than one unit. I want to make sure that's agreed before I proceed. Make that a group. So that's a group. Copy, paste in place. Puts a copy of the exact same building over it. Carry that over. And that's about 25 feet wide. Copy, paste in place. That's another copy of it. Snaps it to 25 feet. Copy, paste, bring that over here. Grab the rotate tool, float it, float the protractor onto the ground plane. Grab a corner, click, make a reference line, drag it out, click again. Make the rotation, snaps to 90 degrees, click again, grab the move tool, and move it right over here. And maybe there's room for another one, maybe there isn't. And it's a little bit, there's an existing building right here. And so I can grab these two, these two groups. Using the scale tool, I can adjust them just a tiny bit, get them a little bit smaller. I float, I look for these two red dots. That's red scale about opposite point. And I'll just squeeze these down just a tiny bit. leave a little bit of room for our existing building that's there on the corner. Then that gives me a corner piece that you can then, using the pencil tool, just uh, start to knock out a pattern for a facade. Maybe this is a corner coffee shop or laundromat or sandwich shop. I'm just going to lay in a pattern here with the pencil tool. SketchUp will snap to the midpoint of whatever something is, so it's very easy to 
float on the midpoints of things. As I float around something, it'll tell you midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. So it's very easy to start to divide something up. <coughs> Excuse me. And then grab the paint and the glass and mirrors and simply lay in a facade like so. I can zoom into that corner, get printed pretty tight, and grab the push-pull tool and pull out portions of the facade. I want to express something in terms of an awning or a sign plate. Let's see, that's pulled out three feet, and that's also three feet, and also three feet. SketchUp will learn that you want things to be pulled out a certain number of feet. Maybe this is the door. Maybe that's pulled out more like five feet. It's the beginning of a sign element or something like that. So this is a, a series of storefronts here, maybe with a corner shop or a corner laundromat. Keep it simple, and, and uh, don't don't invest too much effort or time into this. Just just uh, just do enough to to suggest the land uses uh, and and how we can use existing buildings and existing components to uh, explain our intentions for the site. So that's, that's uh, a simple mass with, with some different components laid over it and then a little bit of design here uh, just on that corner piece to make it a functional, relatable business, retail business there on the corner. Similarly, for our taller pieces here, we have some other components uh, that are a little bit more complicated. Particularly under mixed use, we've got mixed use two story, three story. These are a little bit more complex, complicated. They can be a drag on some computers because they're a little bit more complicated. Go to the downloads folder. And these are these were uploaded to the three D warehouse uh, by uh, by firms or by practices that wish to share them, and I've simplified them just in terms of, of painting them white. Uh, but all the windows and doors you can see are also transparent. So there's a this is a fairly straightforward mixed use building with apartments above and retail below. Uh, but there's several different ways we can start to use this. So it is a it is currently a group. So I'll copy that to the baseboard, close it out, come back to my other demo model, paste it in, and I'll just lay the whole thing. It's a big model. It's a lot. There's a lot going on here. So I need to lay it in and make sure it's on the face of the image. When it says on face on image, it means that the whole model is, is, is touching the image itself. I'll move it over here. All right, there it is. And I can rotate it around. Maybe use the other side of the building. Lay the protractor on, onto the ground plane there. Grab a corner. Drag out a reference line. Turn the whole, ooh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> I want the component to rotate, so I'm going to select the component, grab the corner, drag out a reference line, rotate the whole, whole component around 180 degrees, zoom out a little bit, and I think, I think what I'll do is use two of these to, to to mass out that particular part of the block. So I'll grab this corner, and lay it right there on top of my massing. Just lay it like a veneer, right over it like so. That looks, that looks fairly nice. Then, my other mass here, like this, I can push that down. 
and now it's below the roof line of this model. Just adjust that a little bit. Then what I might do, just a couple of adjustments here. And it's a fairly big model, so I, it is it is testing my computer's system. Here the fan running. It means the RAM is um, is being used. I think what I'll do is make a copy of this. Copy, paste, bring that over here. Flip that on face on image. Rotate that around. Is maybe move up this direction. Right in that corner. Near the building. Right about there. And notch it in. Move it closer like so. Looks like the two buildings are interlocking like a Tetris piece. this in a little bit. And then maybe pull this out a little bit. So it's like putting a face or a mask over your massing. I also liken it to the difference between the sponge of a cake and the icing of a cake. So two fairly large apartment buildings occupying now this portion of the court. You need it to be a touch smaller. That's too much. You, know, you can always grab the scale tool and scale opposite ends. You can always adjust a little bit. Adjust a building too much and it looks really unusual, but, but adjust it just a little bit and, and Still, it still looks reasonable. But eventually, if you, you stretch or compress things too much, doors and windows start to look unreasonable. But that's fairly reasonable right there. So that's a strategy for, one strategy for uh, these elbows, taller three-story elbows, uh, either, either fairly large models uh, like this or smaller models like the two-story uh, uh, storefronts here can can uh, can explain and give dimension to uh, your your uh, apartment blocks. Let's assume that all my buildings are done. I've only demonstrated a couple of the blocks, uh, but the same logic can be applied to all of the blocks if you want um, more detail on each of your um, masses there. Uh, that, that is a strategy in a way that you can, uh, from, from simple massing, layer on a veneer of additional detail and architectural detail uh, that will help you generate uh, your, your multiple renderings. Next thing we have to do, though, um, SketchUp likes to join entities and join different, different tags uh, together, different layers together. So we need to get our buildings out of the way so they, they don't become too sticky with things that are on the ground plane. So what I'll do is select all of the buildings here from the left. When I make a selection from the left, SketchUp will select everything that's within the window. When I make a selection from the right, SketchUp will select everything that it touches. I don't want the drawing to be selected here in this case. So I'm gonna make a selection window 
from the left. And I do that by, by holding the cursor over, clicking on the mouse, and then dragging from the left. It'll select all the entities that are within the left. And I just want to make sure that these are all on the right, right tag or the right layer. So I right mouse, right mouse click, pull up Entity Info, and it, and it confirms that, yes, they are indeed all on the building's layer. What I want to do now is move them up on the z-axis. So I will start a move, and by forcing to the up key with the up arrow key up, I will I, I can move them up in the z-axis. So that's the blue axis of the z-axis, and you can elect to move them out of the way. Uh, in this case, you can move them up 500 feet, and and then you move them back down again later. Uh, if, if that's a round number. Another option is to let go of the mouse and simply type in one inch. That's one double quote. If you move all of your buildings up one inch, uh, they will not touch anything on the ground plane. So there's some logic to that. They now are floating one, one inch above the ground plane. That's a, not a noticeable thing from this perspective. But what it does is that allows us now to lay in elements of our ground plane without them sticking to the buildings, even though they are on a different layer. Another option, as I mentioned, you can move them up 500 feet out of the way and then move them back 500 feet later on, uh, but this will allow us to do uh, some of our groundwork uh, without, without our proposed buildings getting sticky uh, uh, to, to uh, those elements. I then will turn off, I will make uh, ground the ground plane or ground stuff uh, the active layer. I will turn off the building's layer so now they disappear. Now anything we do on this new layer ground stuff uh, will not stick to those buildings. So this is where uh, uh, we can start to lay in uh, things like blocks, the urban block, and what I like to do is lay in a rectangle over the entire block, and another rectangle over the streets. And I extend the rectangles out fairly long and allow them to touch. And allow them to overlap. They will join together. I'll sketch up next to do. Street and any one of these entities, once they are placed, I can click on them, select them, and I can use the scale tool. And let me do that. Just use rectangles. I can use the pencil to join these together, create corners. Extend the streets beyond the image and erase those in Photoshop. And you can see that my blocks are opaque now, we can't see them. But what we can do is, is paint them glass. I can I can pull up the materials. 
and paint each of these entities uh, a dark glass. And we can see then the materials below it. So we'll fix this one here. What that does is it allows us to see uh, all the ground elements that we've planned for, as well as uh, the footprints of our buildings and the existing buildings. So I've laid out a street grid that extends them beyond our initial study area. Those are things that uh, we can erase in Photoshop when we layer it onto an aerial image shortly. So at this point, now I can lay in my parking and start assigning some, and as well as my curb cuts and access points. So here's a parking lot. Here's an access point, curb cut, an access point into that parking. And an access point into that parking or into that courtyard. So those could these could be defined as alleys or they could be just defined as access. Then I will paint them a particular color. Um, the Macintosh version here shows these crayons, but uh, for the PC version I recommend just colors named or, or colors. Colors named uh, attaches a name to each of these colors, so if you start to think about light gray, silver, or gray as, as denoting parking, then you can start to follow a logic for a particular color that would represent the paved area or access points into your parking courtyard or your parking lot. You can also erase the joiners there and make that a contiguous surface. What remains then are three entities or footprints that your buildings are sitting on. We can imagine those as brick paving, so there may be a specific color for brick paving that you're interested in sienna brown, saddle brown, or tan. And so I'll paint those sienna brown or tan. I'll we'll go with the tan today. And that's that will represent the sidewalk area that your buildings will then cover. So if I bring quickly bring back the existing the ground the proposed buildings, you can see that that they all sit on that particular area. Uh, they may need to be moved around, or they, you may maybe need to make adjustments. There are some things here, it looks like I need to move all of these guys around a little bit. So there may be some adjustments that need to be made. But this then represents now the, the sidewalk area that your buildings are sitting on. And so we can continue with that. I'm going to keep ground stuff as the active layer and this whole portion and this the back here is all parking. So that will get painted gray and the rest will be painted a tan or a sienna brown. my parking courtyard and there's an access point here and an access point there so I'll paint those gray take my eraser tool and join those together and then the remaining shapes I'll paint Yeah. Some of you may have some green space or open space also. You can lay that in as well. You have a small, small park or a small playground area. Uh, pick, pick 
pick a green that represents lawn and you can play that in as well. Mm, something like that. All right. Bring back the buildings and you'll see the buildings now sitting on, on those uh, footprints. And we may need to adjust, make adjustments relative to the building's position. So I can select whole groups of buildings and move them back. Looks like I need to make some adjustments. Just move them back a little bit. I can make adjustments as necessary. Everything I select from the left will be contained in the selection. Everything I select from the right, it will select everything that it touches. There. All right, so let's say I've got, so I've got now uh, some different things on the ground plane happening. Maybe, maybe I paint different things on the intersections, make some brick pavers there, or add crosswalks or more decorative paving. I can do that at this level and with, you know, on the, on the active ground plane. Maybe you want a softer gray for your streets. That's possible. Put that in, paint that in, softer gray. I don't like dark, dark, dark asphalt streets. We prefer softer grays. Asphalt doesn't tend to stay dark for very long in this climate. It tends to lighten over time. We've still got a couple of buildings here that need to be moved. So let's say we have all of our buildings laid out and we're accepting of that. I'll go ahead and save. And then I will go to cadmapper.com. And I will pick SketchUp. Start creating a file. I'll sign in with my academic credentials. So you can create a, an account with CAD Mapper using your academic credentials. I just need to sign in because I already have an account. And you can download up to one square kilometer. So I'll select SketchUp. I don't need topography for this. Uh, I want 3D buildings. Many of our 3D buildings are available. Uh, I don't need road geometry. You have the choice of either center lines, outlines, or mesh surfaces. We've already laid out our roads, so it's not necessary for us to bring in uh, road geometry. I'm only interested in this case for this model in some existing buildings. And those existing buildings include our study area. You can see uh, relative to the Convention Center, Ivy Tech, and Canon Commons, uh, there are some existing buildings available in our immediate area. And so the Ivy Tech building and of the smaller buildings on the block, the church, uh, the apartments are available. So I'll make a small area. You can see that's only 0.17 kilometers. You can, you, can, you can download up to a square kilometer for free. And I'll pull 
about that and I'm just interested in these existing buildings. Again, make sure you, you select SketchUp model, 3D buildings, and I'm not interested in road geometry, so create the file. And it looks like this. So it has existing building footprints uh, and uh, a few heights set. So I'll download that to my downloads folder. It is a zip file, so you may need to unzip the file first. And here is the SketchUp file, and this is in version 8. And here are some existing buildings. I'm only interested in a few buildings, so I'm not uh, interested in everything here. A CAD mapper model will bring in, will have an untagged layer, will have a buildings layer, major roads and minor roads, and any other uh, features including water or topography uh, if you select that. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm only interested in buildings, so I'll turn these off. I'll make buildings the active layer, and I'm interested in this group. It'll bring in these existing buildings as groups, which is really quite nice. They're in the kind of a tan color right now. We can make them a darker gray. We can keep them a tan color, or we can make them a darker gray. And so my neighbors here part of the block. This is the church. And so these are the existing buildings that I'm interested in. So I'll click on that, paint them. I can hold down the shift key and select more than one group. So those are the buildings that are affected by my plan or that are uh, acknowledged as existing buildings in the plan. Copy those to the pasteboard. come in like this. So here's the convention center, the church, my neighbors on the block. Bring that in, line it up with the drawing as best I can. Ivy Tech came in, had a slight angle, so I will just move that into place. These are building footprints by volunteers. And so those represent existing buildings that I'm working around. This is the uh, Church of Christ building, which is now uh, loft apartments. These are the existing apartments. There's a law office right here, and there's an existing church. I have demolished a couple of buildings in, that, in, in those cases there. Ivy Tech comes in a little bit of an angle. Muncie's street grid is two degrees off, so I will select that, grab the rotate tool, grab a reference line, start to rotate that, and then let go, type in two, and it will shift that two degrees. Convention center looks fine. So in the existing model, I just want to make sure I want to highlight, using holding down the shift key, I can select all of my existing buildings here, just make sure they're on the right layer I want them to be on. And I'll right mouse click, entity info, and I'll push them to existing buildings. Now all of them are on a layer, independent layer called existing buildings. still have some work to do on the ground plane, so I'll turn off the buildings and the existing buildings just to make sure that they are turned off. I want a little bit of green space here. We are part of the convention center, so I'll paint that the same green we were painting other things. this green here. Same, similarly, there is um, quite a bit of green space on the Ivy Tech site. 
There is a sidewalk in front of it, however, so I'll lay in, maybe lay in a rectangle here for the Ivy Tech sidewalk and use that tan that we were using for that. But there is quite a bit of green space as part of the Ivy Tech campus there. Leave that in as the green that we were using. Turn on the existing and the and the buildings, and that looks to be a pretty complete plan. There is some space over here that maybe I need to work on. Just figure this out here. This portion of the convention center. Close that up. All right, we're ready to start exporting and starting to use this model for some things. So what I'd like to do is go to camera, I turn off the perspective, go to standard views top, and then zoom extents, and then turn off the layers I'm not interested in. We don't want the drawing to be visible, so I'll turn the drawing off. I will then also Go to view and turn off the guides, any guides we might have, and any axes that we may have. Turn those off. We're only interested in existing buildings, streets, and our proposed buildings. I will turn on the shadows. That's under window or view shadows. It's also under the standard toolbar. And select a time probably in late fall and probably in late afternoon. That's consistent with the, the shadow lines that we're seeing in, in uh, Beacon GIS. Um, you want our shadows to match what you have, whatever aerial view that you see in GIS or Google Earth. So I'll select sometime in October and sometime in late afternoon. I'll use the sun for shading and I will toggle some of these features I will probably not use on ground. I think display on faces is enough, but probably not on the ground. I want the shadows to be nice and transparent like that. But examine what your uh, aerial photography from GIS is and do your best to match the shadows as, in terms of what you're seeing there. Well, what we notice on, on Beacon is that we think that they are in late fall and that they represent um, uh, late afternoon. And you can see that taller buildings cast more shadow than shorter buildings. And that puts us in a good position right there. I'm now ready for export. Keep in mind, we are in top view. The camera has perspective turned off, so it has parallel projection. Standard view top. And this is for the plan view. And then I get ready for export. Export 2D graphic. I'm going to choose portable network graphic. I'm going to send it to the desktop. Then I click on options. And I want a fairly large image. So the image is taller than it is wide. So I'm going to pick um, 5,000 pixels. The view size is, is, is the resolution of your, of your uh, display or your monitor. I want to unclick that and just make sure that it's a nice large image, about 5,000 pixels tall. Line scale, scale multiplier refers to the line weight of the lines we're working with. I want to push that down to about 0.5. And I want to make sure that anti-alias and transparent background are selected. Now these are options endemic only to the PNG file extension. Transparent background means that everything around the model itself will be transparent, which means we can float it on another image. Very important um, option to be selecting as we're exporting this PNG. That only works with PNGs. This do, does not work with JPEGs or TIFFs. The transparent background option is important for us. So we are making a PNG and we are uh, making a transparent background. And we click OK and it will, it will export a PNG file 
to our desktop. I then can close, uh, I can then can save this file because I'm going to come back to it and do some other things with it later and quit SketchUp. We then go to Beacon. BeaconSchneiderCorp.com, State of Indiana, County of Delaware. Go to the map. And I turn everything off. Everything. Everything off except for 2021. Aerial imagery. Parcels to get turned off. Muncie data gets turned off. Water gets turned off. Corporate political boundaries get turned off. Transportation gets turned off. Just make sure that everything is turned off under each of these pull down menus, except for the 2021 aerial photography. Then Zoom into your study area. You need to go downtown. You need to find Ivy Tech. Ivy Tech is this building here. This is our area. Two and a half block region. You need to center that in the center of the image. We can't zoom in too far. select any information here. I've got to be careful. We can't zoom in this far. We can't. We want, and this is probably too far, we probably want that middle ground where it says 200 feet in the scale bar. That's about right. And we just want to make sure that our development is centered in the center of the image there. Now for other situations, uh, for mapping and the like, I've um, we've taken you through different steps through the print setup button because it, what it does is it marries this scale bar to the image itself. In this case we don't need that. We can actually just save a map image with this button right here, download map image, because we don't need the scale bar for this particular image. Uh, for other situations we've needed that scale bar and so I've taken you through different steps just to actually pr uh, save a pr uh, the print preview of the image. Um, and, and, and marry it to a particular paper size. But in this case, we only need to download the map image. So I'll click on that and select PNG, and it will save it to our downloads menu. And it looks like this. Now you wanna make double check to make sure that your entire study area is contained in the window. Uh, this was a fairly vertical study area, so it had to be just make sure that we had enough of the image there as was necessary. That's in my downloads folder, so I'll move that to my desktop. And then I will open that in Photoshop. Open, I'll select this map, and it will look like this, fitting on the screen. And the first thing I want to do is double click. I want my layers to be visible. We're going to be do using a lot of the layers here. And I want to double click on background, double click on that, it makes it layer zero. This now make, makes it a layer that is editable. And what when I and can edit this image now, it means that I can change its opacity. And I can actually ghost this image in a very straightforward manner. 
I've shown you uh, operations and how to ghost images differently. But in this case, uh, uh, is, this is a fairly straightforward way of, of ghosting the image just by uh, uh, changing its opacity. So that exists on its own layer. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Now I will place embedded, and I will select my plan view, that PNG image that we prepped. Here it is. And it comes in like so. Let's zoom in. This around. Just my window a little bit. Because my window is actually bigger than the screen at the moment. So let me just adjust that so we can get the full screen in there. Okay, now I can see everything. Okay, so here is our plan. It is a smart object. You can see it, that there, that it is not a rasterized image, it's a smart object, so it, it can float, you can float it now. You gotta know where everything is, so you gotta know where Ivy Tech is, and I can, I can grab, let me zoom out just a little bit. I can grab a corner, and in Photoshop, it will preserve the aspects of the image the aspect ratio. If you want to change the aspect ratio of the image, you hold down the shift key and you can actually stretch an image away from its original aspect ratio. But for the most part, in Photoshop now, if you grab a corner, it's going to preserve the aspect ratio of the image, the true proportions of it. If you put down the shift key, you can actually transform it fairly freely. See how I can pull a corner, holding down the shift key, and I can move and stretch this until it lines up with the existing streets that I've laid in there. If we need to rasterize that image, uh, we, we can double click on this layer and we have the option to rasterize that image if we need to do anything else to it. right mouse click, and I will rasterize that layer. That allows me to make adjustments to it. So it changes it from a smart object to, to a rasterized image. What that does is it allows me to, to erase off the ends of those streets that we made. So I will grab a eraser and make it a brush under general brushes. There's a soft round brush. I'll make it a fairly large size. And what that will do is it will take the eraser tool in Photoshop and turn it into a brush. And here I will, I will simply erase off the ends of my streets. I still gotta adjust this a little bit. the right size, plus Muncie's street grid is about one degree off. You can rotate the image as well. And I'll just, I'll take the eraser tool and I'll, and I'll erase off the end so that they blend into the context. Blend into the context. Blend into the context. Same with the edge of my development. Blend that right in. Do that with existing buildings too, or just leave your existing buildings intact. I think it reads a little bit better. This gets a little confusing if you blend your images too much. I'm actually going to undo that. I still need to adjust this.
to be bad. Okay. Still not quite satisfied with the sizing. It's just got to be a bit a little bigger. Cover up that edge of the convention center, that edge of IBT. It's a little bit better. So that's placed, and then layer zero, I'll turn the opacity down to about 50%, and that automatically ghosts the background image. And then I'll save this. So I'm going to save this as a Photoshop document, Photoshop format. And what that will do, it gives a PSD file extension And what it does is it preserves all the layers in their current uh, iteration. So it keeps all the layers intact. It keeps all the layers intact in case you ever need to come back to this image. So I save that as a Photoshop document in case I ever need to come back to this document. And it keeps all the layers exactly as they are, which is quite handy. I don't need all of the context, so I'm just going to grab the crop tool and I'm going to crop down to the immediate. We don't need all of this context. I want the development to be sort of centered. There is some context that we need to acknowledge, you know, it's things like the roundabout or Walnut Street or the hotel, but you know, for the most part, you don't need all your context. You need just enough. That looks about right. And now we're ready to place trees. So what I do, I go back to OneDrive. Sign in. And I go to cutouts, and I go to trees and plan view. And I can page through these and pick and download just a few examples of trees to download to the folder. You get two to three good species that are appropriate for the context. That's a pretty good number. If you use all the same tree, that's one thing. But if you've got at least a couple of different species, then your viewer accepts it as, as a photorealist. This would not be appropriate for months. Either. If I get a couple of species down, then that's, that's appropriate. So let's say you know two to four species are appropriate for this. And then I will pick a corner of the image and start to work. So I go to place embedded and pick my first tree. These are all in my downloads folder now. And it comes in fairly large, so you need to resize the tree. Just grab a corner. In Photoshop now, it will preserve the aspect ratio of the proportions of the tree. Just grab a corner, take it down, lay it in. And that's now sized. There's some fairly large trees on the Ivy Tech campus there, so. So that's now sized for that. It, it shows up as a smart object as its own layer. To save the work of resizing the tree each time, I right mouse click and duplicate the layer. It now makes a duplicate of the exact same tree and when I move that into place, it lines it up with the other. So this saves a little bit of time. 
duplicate the layer. Get another one here. Duplicate the layer. And another one in here. Because there's some fairly large and, and mature trees on the Ivy Tech property. I'll put my second species now. So place embedded. Second species, bring that into the image. Different color, different kind of shade cover, things like that. This might be deciduous, it might be conifers. So I'm going to bring that in. I think I'm going to use this as a street tree, so make it fairly small. And once again, in the layer order, duplicate the layer. Place the second, duplicate the layer. So this becomes a very convenient street tree on the side of the property. Click, duplicate the layer, right mouse click, duplicate the layer, until I have all trees on that side of the property. Now, these last few, we're going to have a lot of layers all of a sudden. So that's this, these four represent these four, what you can do then is Hold down the shift key, highlight all four of these layers, right mouse click, and you can merge those layers. So now those four trees are on their own layer. Consequently, these street trees now represented over here. I can, I can hold down the shift key and select all of these layers, right mouse click, and merge those layers. So now here's a line of trees represented there. I can duplicate that layer and now I've got a whole line of trees that I can move over here. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. And this tree got in the way so that can be erased. That's in the way, just erase it out of the way there. Okay. Let's bring in a third species just for good measure. Comes in fairly large. Just have to size that down. You can change the layer order. Right mouse click, duplicate layer. Right mouse click, duplicate layer. These are very colorful, they're very opaque. They are covering up some information. So what I like to do, I want to make sure that that's on its own layer and then the background is its own layer. Now though, all of the trees can be merged. So I will, using holding on the shift key, I will, I will select all of these trees together and then merge the layers together. So all the trees are on one layer now. 
And then we can change, lower the opacity a little bit so that they appear somewhat ghosted. That's 54% in the realm of 50 to 60%. And you can see the trees are visible, but they're also letting some things through. If I double click on the layer and it brings up blending options, if we select multiply, you'll see that the that normal, the trees are, are still opaque, but they're ghosted. If we select multiply, you can see that they're completely transparent. Totally different effect here. But then I would like a small drop shadow on that. And that will be blend mode multiply, fairly low opacity. And I want that drop shadow. So the trees are now casting a shadow just as are the buildings. But that also has to be the same angle of the sun. About 145, 140 degrees is about right. That's exactly where we selected the sun to be. And that can you can change the opacity of those if you want a hard shadow or a soft shadow. You can see that opacity there. That is under blend mode multiply. So it is layering a transparent shadow. And we can select the distance and spread. We don't need this to be terribly tall. It would just kind of, you know, a few pixels there. We don't need huge shadows on these trees. We just want a little bit of shadow on that tree. And make it very fairly soft. Just, so now the trees don't cover up information. They're not covering up a lot of building edges. Um, they're, not, they're not covering up. You can still see the elements of your plan underneath them. They're just doing the desired effect of populating the plan with trees. And they do have a drop shadow on them. Drop shadow is... You can test it without it or with, with it. Turn down the spread because I don't want the drop shadow to be distracting. Just enough to make an effect make it fairly opaque. But I don't, I don't want it to cover up there. And then when you save this as a Photoshop document, so that's saved. Photoshop document keeps all of these layers intact. And then I will save a copy as a PNG, format with graphic, and that will preserve the transparency of the background. So the fact that we ghosted the background, layer zero, or the aerial photograph, it will, it will respect that. So I'm going to save it as a PNG, and that's what I put into my future files. I save the Photoshop document for reference in case I ever need to come back to this plan, make adjustments to it, and then I save the PNG for PowerPoints and posters and things of that nature. Close out Photoshop, and take a look at the final PNG, and it looks like this. We can see that the aerial photograph is ghosted, we can see that our, our development floats on top of it. We can see a visible tan for sidewalks. We can see a sienna brown for intersections. Uh, we can see the, the trees uh, ghost, uh, that are, are floating above it. Let's zoom in just a little bit. We can start to see the closer effects of our decision making. And that completes this exercise, the uh, Plan 605. Illustrated plan, digital illustrated plan, uh, your development in plan view with trees.